Okay, guys, we have a tip star. We have the buzzing noise. We have an extremely hot condenser fan motor. I'm assuming the compressor is probably out in thermal overload as well from a bad capacitor, but we're gonna check all that. And this is actually a heat pump. So let's dive into it. Okay, so you can see our contactors pulled in. It's got a separate fan capacitor, although this is the OEM motor. I guess the five went out on the dual down there. So they added a separate five. So, but we don't have anything coming on. The first thing I wanna do is see if we have thermal overload. on the compressor. So basically all I'm gonna do is to do that. When thermal overload happens, all it is is uh, when thermal overload happens, the common opens. So all we have to do is test. If y'all can see what I'm doing here test this black common and this yellow run and that'll tell us if we have thermal overload or not because your common is what separates when thermal overload happens no reason to really test the hermetic the hermetic side I'll pull these two off right here You can see the meter. I really don't need to see it as long as y'all can hear it. And you can hear it beeping. So we'll check from common. Common to run. We have nothing. So we're definitely in thermal overload. So that means we're gonna have to cool it off with a water hose and I'm gonna leave those off cause I'm gonna put my alligator clips on there. But we had no fan motor and no compressor. So both these capacitors have probably died. Either that or the fan motor died and that's what caused the compressor to go in the thermal. Oh, look, one of the wires was pulled off the uh, capacitor. That wire was pulled completely off. Let's see if this capacitor. Can y'all see? Yeah, y'all can see the meter. Capacitor is dead. It is completely dead. Let's check this one we'll just pull the herm off we're looking for 50 we have it so that's telling me well it's weak so we're gonna put a 50 slash 5 on here and cool the compressor off um, and she should be good to go let me set up my alligator clips and we're gonna start cooling this thing off. And I'll work the capacitor on there while we cool it off. So basically a little trick is you go to your beeper and you can take these alligator clips And you can put one on run. That way you don't have to guess. You know, a lot of people will just hose it off for so long and then say, okay, well, let's try it. But this way there's no guessing. And when the compressor closes, your meter will beep continuity. So that's how I do that. Two alligator clamps. I'll put the meter 
up here on the disconnect. Because I have a magnet, so I'll let it hang there. And then I've got an alligator clamp on common. And an alligator clamp on run. I'm gonna change that to a 50 slash five because it's weak and this one is completely dead. So we'll chunk that over there at the wife. Let's see if we can hit her in the head. Oh, nope, didn't throw it hard enough. <laughs> All right, guys, let me get the top pulled off. Okay, so we got our top off. We have our water hose. And we're just gonna gently Put some water on there until we hear that meter over there beep. You want to put it on top, but I usually try to get some of, some of it all the way around and then focus on the top. I don't hear my beater beeping yet, so we're still in overload. Still don't hear the meter beeping. I'm not gonna make y'all sit here and wait for this the whole time. Okay, okay guys, y'all hear that? She has closed. So I'm gonna lay the top back down, screw it down, put the capacitor on and hopefully she'll fire up. Hopefully the motor's not burnt. It spins free. Probably just a bad, that dead cap got it. All right, we're back down here at the unit. And again, you can hear the meter beeping and you can see the resistance. So we'll just simply do this and that. Take those off, put these back on the contactor. Just like so. And then that one. Just like so. And then we will tighten them up. tight that's the run this is the common and that one's tight okay now we'll change out this capacitor All right, so I'll unplug the defrost board to let the contactor release so I don't short nothing out because these brackets on ICP and carrier are so close to the contactor coil, you can easily short them out. And I did have a small capacitor, a small 50 slash five to fit in this bracket. Okay, got that one out. One dead soldier. Here's our new one. We're gonna test it. I'm gonna put the meter right here though, where y'all can see the meter. Let me take my alligator clips off my meter. All right, common to Herm, we're looking for 50. 
we have 49.6 that'll work and then common the fan we're looking for five and we have five date today is the 9th. I like to try to date my capacitors when I can remember to. Okay, we got one in there. Two. Now we just gotta wire her up. The yellows are our commons. The brown is fan. And the blue is herm or hermetic, hermetic. All right. She should start. Well, she's alive. Let's see what we're working with here. I haven't even looked at it. Definitely working with an ICP. It's an R model. It's a three ton from 2011. And it's R22. This must have been a dry ship unit. It doesn't say, but I'm, I'm pretty sure this was a dry unit. Okay, so we're just gonna make sure the suction pressure looks okay. The way we're going to do that is I made me some new ones. I had lost them. I had lost the other ones, but I got me a gauge and an adapter from Baker Distributing. They had both of these in stock. I made me uh, a new suction one. I still had my head pressure one. I had just lost my suction one. So I'm gonna unscrew this here. Make sure the suction pressure looks okay. Suction pressure has come up to about 70. Actually a little, right, yeah, at 70. Now before you troll start on me, the customer denied me getting the big gauges out and evaluating the Freon further and said she doesn't think she needs Freon because before the capacitor happened, she said it was cooling fine, but again, Got a little bit above 70 now you just sometimes you got to give them time to run so it should be fine i'm gonna sit there and i'm gonna leave that gauge on there until i'm finished picking up all my stuff 
One more, one more thing I wanted to point out. A lot of people say I don't clean up the cabinets. I just seen where I left a spot. Okay. I did clean it with my brush that broke and I had to tape it, but it's still kind of weak. I cleaned out the cabinet. I tidied up the wires with a zip tie. And uh, I do clean the cabinets, guys. Just because I don't put everything on camera doesn't mean I don't do it. Again, we're sitting at about 71, 72 pounds of suction. So she wants to let that ride. She doesn't want to put any Freon in it right now. Can't really say that I blame her. I'm, I'm okay with 71, 72 pounds. So I'm going to button this thing up and I'm probably going to wash this coil with just some straight water.